Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Stiff Arm. Today's video, we got a special video for you guys today. We're we'll talking about Mel Tucker. He's potentially on the hot seat after the last season, going five and seven and making a bowl game. After going to the Peach Bowl the year before, some people saying Kenneth Walker, some people saying quarterback competition. A lot of things up in the air for Michigan State. And I'm, I'm here to break it down. I'm here to ask if Mel Tucker's on the hot seat after getting a 10 year, $95 million contract. That's crazy to me, um, but let's get right into it. Mel Tucker, 18 and 14 in three seasons, 12 and 13 in Big Ten play. Not the best conference record you want to have uh, after three years, not even 500. It's a tough scene as he's one of the highest paid coaches in the country, one of the highest paid coaches in the Big Ten. 2020, they went two and five. It's his first year. He beat Michigan. I think he had. I'll call it a successful season. He, uh, you know, there weren't really expectations during the COVID year. 2020 was such a weird year. Everyone wearing masks, no one in the crowd, anything like that. And then 2021, 11 and two, 11 and two, beating Michigan once again. That was huge for them. That was very huge. Kendall Walker having five touchdowns, the comeback win. I keep mentioning. Kenneth Walker. So, and then 2022 last season, five and seven, not the season you want to have. Uh, like I said earlier, two and one against Michigan, one and two against Penn State, zero oh and three against Ohio State. And the biggest, re biggest red flag to me about Mel Tucker, six and eight on the road. That's, that's not a good record you want to have. Most of the L's, you know, Michigan State took this year on the, on the road, Washington, Ohio State. Michigan I mean like that those are those are tough you can never you can never win win those tough games but you got to start winning road games that's how you got to that's how you win in big in big games and big moments that's how you elevate the program you got to win on the road you got to go in and, and and go take what's yours and exactly what they did in 2020 where they took home um, Bunyan they, they went into Michigan and took home Bunyan so but in 2023, Michigan State, four straight home games, four, Central Michigan, uh, Richmond, Washington with Michael Penix, Maryland with uh, Tungavailoa, and then at Iowa. First five games, uh, that back half is pretty tough. Those last three, especially at Iowa, that is tough. Washington looked like a horse last year. They, they, they clicked very, very later on in the year and it started going crazy. If you ask five to ten different people, what do you think Michigan Michigan State's record is? I bet you half of them are on different pages. Half of them are on different pages. Some people say two and three. Some people say four and one. Some people say five and zero. Oh. Some people say three and two. It, you don't know what is going to happen here. And then their other road games, like I said earlier, you know they got one on the road at Rutgers, at Minnesota, at Ohio State, at Indiana. So. The road for Michigan State does not get easier. They got a very tough schedule. They got to get the six, six wins here. They have to get the six wins here. I wouldn't say Mel Tucker is on the hot seat, but he has to win this year. You cannot be getting paid, you know, $9.5 million a year and go 5 7 and not make a bowl game. Now, I get it. The Big Ten East is one of the hardest divisions in college football, and you get screwed by having to play Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan every year. That is tough. Now, in not not this year, but the year after 2024, USC and UCLA is going to come in. No one really knows how that division is going to work yet. But Michigan State is going to still have to play Penn State. They're still going to have to play Michigan. They do the three rival things. Those two are guaranteed. Penn State and Michigan are guaranteed. I'm not sure about Ohio State or they, they're going to get are they gonna get Indiana, they get Illinois. Who knows who they're going to get for the third option? They maybe get a UCLA or somebody. I don't know. But they're going to get Michigan and Penn State for sure. So they still they still have a tough schedule no matter where they go, what division they're in, schedule, all that. But how is Michigan State going to move forward without Kenneth Walker and Jaden Reed? They had they didn't have Kenneth Walker last year. They were the worst rushing team at Power Five last year. The worst. And everybody had the audacity to blame Peyton Thorne and, and and Jay Johnson. It's like they had a lot of injuries on the offensive line. Couldn't run the ball. Didn't have an established runner in the system. 
they couldn't do anything. Literally could not do anything. If you don't, if you don't have a good rushing attack, you're screwed. Because then everyone's gonna know you. You rely on the pass. If they if they double team Jane Reed and have have them beat you with Keon Coleman, you're not gonna win games like that. And that's no offense to Keon Coleman, but they tried that in Michigan. Michigan, he went crazy, and they didn't throw it to him the second half. They kind of shut that down. They didn't. They weren't having none of that. And then what happened second half? They wanted to get fights in the tunnel. Like, come on now. Like, what are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? But last team at Power 5 rushing, that is not a good look at all. You have to improve on that. You literally have to. And I'm not saying go go out there and get a stud running back like Kenneth Walker. If you got that, go ahead. That, hey, that's cool. That's cool. All smart defense, all cool with Michigan State fans. But Michigan State has had a top 25 recruiting class the last two years. Now, the Mark D'Antonio years, those were some bad classes. He, he inherited the last two years of D'Antonio, top 40, 40 overall. That's not good at all. You just can't win like that. He inherited, you know, D'Antonio was a great coach, taking on Big Ten championships his last two to three years, not the best, just not the best at all. Um, and so he kind of had a, you know, change the scenery, get a lot of transfers in, change the regime. And that honestly spread, uh, sped up the the process of Mel Tucker. And that's why we're asking if he's on the hot seat or not. Because that 11-2 and two season in year two sped up the whole entire process. Now, if Mel Tucker went 2-5, and 5-7, five, five to 11-2, totally different story. Totally, that, that's what you expect. You expect year three to start going crazy. But it said year two went crazy. And then year three... Not even a bowl game, not even the Gator Bowl, not even the Tax Slayer Bowl, not even the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl, not even the, the Quicken Lanes Bowl, not even the Stiff Arm Bowl, you know, like not even any bowl. It, 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 it is tough to see, um, but I, I don't think Mel Tucker's on a hot seat, but this is a must-win season for Mel Tucker because they gave him that big contract, that big contract, that 2021 season, or that 2022 season, no, 2021, 2021 season sped up the whole process for Mel Tucker and it wasn't a great look having that bad of a season this year. Now, Mel Tucker, he's he's had to fill a lot of holes through the transfer portal and he's a great transfer portal, you know, great getting additions and transfer portal, but they had to produce this year. You had to go into the bowl this year. You have to go seven to five and better. You cannot have another year like this. The schedule is tough. Schedule at Iowa. Michigan, at Minnesota, Nebraska, who knows what they're going to be like. Ohio State, at Ohio State, at Indiana, that is always a big game. Indiana is not something to mess with at home. Tom Allen's going to get those boys ready. And then Penn State, who's going to have a great year. Drew Aller, they got the two running backs, two-headed monsters. You got Washington with Michael Penix Jr. I mean... I'm really excited for Michigan State football in 2023. They do have a quarterback battle. I think Peyton Thorne is going to win that. You can't, you can't blame Peyton Thorne for last year. You simply cannot. That battle of a rushing attack, it, it's, it's, it was so, it was so bad. Like, you can't blame it on the quarterback. He couldn't do anything. They weren't, they weren't biting for those play actions. They you couldn't get anything going. You literally could not. So. I'm excited to see what Michigan State does in 2023, and they hopefully improve from the 5-7 and seven year they had this year. That's all I got for today's episode. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. How do you guys see Michigan State doing? Is Mel Tucker on a hot seat? Is, do, if you're a Michigan State fan, do you like Mel Tucker? Let me know down below. How about your boy? Subscribe. I'm, yep, I'm an up-and-coming YouTuber. Uh, follow the stiff arm on, on YouTube. Say follow me on Twitter down below. I'm Austin Lynch. That's all I got for today's episode. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.